Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I'm going to do a channeling session with your help because you have submitted questions for me. I actually did a post on Above Life Channel a few weeks ago on the community tab and I asked for questions to ask Kobe Bryant from the afterlife. So thank you. I am going to read your questions now and channel with Kobe. So I do have my computer here. My laptop is open so that you can so that you can see so I can see the questions. See, here we go. Questions. Yeah. So just so you know, that's what I'm looking at here. And I'm going to invite him in. I can feel his energy really strong. Today is April 29th, 2020. I think it's a great opportunity to connect with Kobe and and get some insight, maybe some inspiration from him, given all the stuff that's going on in our current human lives right now, especially in the United States, and just get some insight from him, you know, some inspiration. So Mr. Kobe Bryant, he is very tall. Okay, that is so cliche, Bridget. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. <sighs> Hi, nice to, like I wanna stand up and nice to meet you, have a seat, have a seat. He says, do you mind if my daughter joins us? Not at all, come on in. She's like, hi, hi, have a seat. She's pretty, her face is pretty, really pretty. Profile side, yeah, very pretty. Hi, nice to meet you, hi, hi. She a beautiful smile. Um, he says, light of my life, and he kind of hugs her, light of my life. So yes, answer to the first question, how is his daughter Gigi faring on the other side? She is beautiful, she is, is with her dad. They are, yes, in spirit form, connected and together. So there you guys go. I'm sure that many people would probably ask that. It's so great that you're sitting right in front of me too because then I can like look at the camera instead of turning to the side and such. All right, so I am, I, I don't, you guys, um, I have to say he's good looking. I'm not a big sports fan. <laughs> I know nothing about basketball, football, whatever. I, you're a basketball player. I do know that. I know you were part of the Lakers. I think you were. Oh my gosh. I know California Lakers, right? Is that right? LA Lakers. Okay. So you guys are throwing stuff at the, they're throwing stuff at YouTube now. He says, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, you just be yourself, be yourself. He says, be yourself. So, um, you definitely have a charisma about you. I can feel your energy. It feels really alive. There's a lot of purple energy. Oh, I'm wearing purple. Mm -hmm. A nod to that, um, which is when I connect with purple, it's like divine wisdom, like divine connection. I know that in your human life, there are people who are fans and people who are not fans. I know there's some, you know, in all of our lives, I guess there's points in our lives where we look back and think I could have done better. I could have made better choices. Um, I know that there's some of that because I can feel some of that, that conflict for you. And um, I'm not here to judge and I'm not here to solve any mysteries. And I'm just here for the pure connection, Kobe. It's nice to meet you. Is it okay if I call you Kobe? Absolutely. He says, absolutely, absolutely. He says, all my friends do, all my friends do. Um, he literally just holds up a big mug. Like, I don't know if it's a big mug of root beer or a big mug of beer, but a huge mug, like a big mug with like overflowing beer or something. That's what it looks like, you guys. I don't know what that means, if it's a symbol for something, but it shows up this huge mug. Like it reminds me of like the A&W root beer mugs. And I say that, you guys, because I'm not like a beer drinker. I'm not, I'm not into the ales. <laughs> <laughs> so he shows me that like Kunk and sets it down and kind of slides it over I'm like okay it's like cheers um he's giving me the vibe of like being with the guys feeling connected to other legends um in his sport that he has looked up to in his time he's saying something about Camille or Jamil Jamal Camille or Jamal Jamal there's multiple names Jamal there's a Camille I don't know who Camille is um or Camilia Camilla Camille. Okay. Um, I feel this kind of camaraderie, this connected energy, this being with the guys, kind of um, being with the team. And he says, um, and he's showing me like a, is it a Michael Jordan? Bulls, Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan kind of vibe. Um, he's showing me, um, then I see Magic Johnson's big face. You know, Magic Johnson just has this huge face, this huge head. So I see that. And... Oh, 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 okay. Okay. I see, um, I see the helicopter. I see it. That's how you 
passed away. That's why you crossed over. Yeah. He said, yeah. I know there's going to be a lot of questions about this. And he says that to me. I know there's going to be a lot of questions about this. There is, some, there are some questions about this. And you guys know that I'm not into the drama, but I will um, honor whatever it is that you feel that you would like to share, that you think your fans would um, be served in their own individual lives and knowing, like for healing. He says, ah, the legacy, the legend. He said, there's so much more to you than what they put on stage or what you see on a screen, you know? He says, for me, people had the opportunity to watch me do what I love, you know? Watch me, watch me work. And that's what it feels like, you know? You get on the court and you're, you, you're working. You work, you work, you work. He's showing me coaching. So was he a coach or an assistant coach too? He's showing me coaching, like hollering at... Um, the teams and stuff um and he's got like this whistle and there's something about the whistle that's kind of this joke like multiple whistles <laughs> i don't know what the deal is with multiple whistles but i see multiple whistles almost like a, a a lifeguard or a referee instead of a coach kind of a thing um he says what is going on here you guys look like a bunch of clowns let's get it together come on let's get it together let's try let's try this again like running drills and running um sequences and um very much a like choreographing things like it's almost like you guys like dancing like that's how I could do what would be able to relate for me Brid as Bridget is like choreographing a, like a dance or something like that a dance routine or that kind of thing that's kind of what coaching was he says um the plays and the the movements you know you got to have kind of a rhythm and he says you got to be in sync he says now when I'm a player on the court he says I'm part of a team and you got to be part of this cohesive group it's like a it's you just sense you know when you need to be in a certain spot and there and you can tell when there's an opening so when there's a gap that's when things start to fall apart and people start getting hard hitting hard on themselves and each other and you get on each other's nerves and then it creates this kind of crumbling effect you got to you got to stay in this net in this and he's kind of showing me this energy of like, you kind of move down the court like in a net, like as a net, like there's certain points that you, you're at. And when you're there and this other person is here, it's like, shing, like a magic shing, kind of a thing. And he's showing me coming up the side of the, the hoop and um, you guys, I don't know basketball. Sorry, I know a lot of you do. And you're going to be like screaming, but he's at the side of the net and he's like, dunking it or putting it in like it's always on the side like sneaking it through and on the side and then on the side and um that's what i feel like he's there's a lot of action there's a lot of good energy with that there's a lot of enthusiasm and he feels really proud to be part of a uh this um this historic thing i don't know what the historic thing is or this legacy or this legendary thing this historic thing and there must be like something about the team that's historic or something really major monumental about the team because i feel it and i feel this yellow jersey and i know that it's yellow and purple i think it's yellow and purple but it almost feels yellow and blue i don't know what that's about the blue and it almost reminds me of like then i see like some things i see like blue devils or duke i see some other things that i can um, not sure if that's history for him or other people that he knows that he's good buddies or good friends with. Um, he says something about my brother, my brother, my brother. He has a best friend that's like a brother to him. Um, no disrespect if he actually has a brother, but he's saying my brother, my brother, my brother. And it's like his friend. Hey, brother, how you doing? Kind of a thing. But like a term of endearment, really tight best friends, closer than best friends kind of a vibe. And then um, he's saying something about like a Christiana or Christiana, Christiana, Christiana. Is there a, a girl, a daughter, a child named that? Is there a wife, a girlfriend, someone Christiana or Christiana is what it looks like to me. Um, and so I'm not sure what that's about. And then I'm also seeing, let's see, okay, let's make sure we ask some of these questions that are here on for this channel of Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter, Gigi. So it looks like, thank you, Nancy, by the way, for your question about Gigi. And let's see, Michelle asks, have you transitioned or are you staying close to earth to be nearby your family? That's a great question. Thanks, Michelle. Have you transitioned? How would you, well, of course you've transitioned because I'm channeling you and you look like, you look like a spirit in the afterlife, like you've fully made your transition. 
But have you been around your family or have you stayed around your family? Can you speak about that? Can you talk about that? That's an individual choice. He said, that's a personal choice. He said, yes. I saw the, the tributes and the, the memorials and he said, um, he's like the fanfare. I saw the fanfare, uh, kind of like the farewell. And he says, um, it's mostly sad. Like he says, um, the sorrow that he feels about the passing, about his transition is more so for his daughter and for her siblings, for her ki his kids and there must be other kids too, because I see more than just his family with his wife. There must be more kids than that. Um, and then I see, maybe he's referring to her basketball team, that might be too. Um, I feel this, like there's a loss there. There's a, there's a hole there. Like, he's like, I like honored, like I lived my life. He's like, I'm honored. I'm honored to have the life I had. I, I am lucky, I am a lucky son of a, and he says a word that rhymes with which. Um, I'm a lucky son of a, and he says, um, but um, he says, so it's not about me. It, it, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about, it's about the others, right? It's about others. It's about the others. Um, you're right by me, he said. Thank you, because I did not channel you right away. I did not want to do that. I did not want to do that, in part because I felt a lot of people perished that day in that helicopter. And all of their lives matter. So thank you. Thanks, Kobe, for saying that. He says, but the sadness, the hardest part for him, the hard part, the sadness, you know, the loss is really his daughter. The hole is for his daughter because she wasn't, she wasn't able to live her life. Like she didn't have the fullness. She didn't have the opportunities or the, the, the chance to live, you know, to, to get married, to have babies, to have her own career, to, to, you know, make stupid mistakes. You know, she didn't have the chance. She didn't have the chance to, 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 to live, to really live, you know, she didn't have the chance for that. And so there's a lot, um, there's a lot that's missing there. And that's the part that he feels, you guys, that he can feel. So for the family, it's more for her benefit to, and she doesn't feel like, Gigi, do you feel like you missed out on life after, as being transitioned in the afterlife? She says, no, she says, um, not at all, not at all. It doesn't, seem like something that it's not something you planned for or you would expect but it's you guys she has a real wisdom about her I gotta say Gigi she has a real wisdom about her and a spark about her very godlike like light a lot of light intuition spirit soul light of her soul god connection and very wise and she says um I, you guys, I don't like to channel kids. I just don't like to do it. I, I, I want to be respectful to both the parents, but she's shining. She feels very bright and she feels like um, for her mother is part of what, um, they didn't stick around, you guys. They didn't not transition, but their energies of the spirit were there for the mom because she had a really hard time with it. And I see a dove, which is grace and peaceful energy. And that's what I'm going to say about that. Okay, there's also orange energy around her, around the spirit of Gigi's energy, and orange is like drive and, and purpose and passion and commitment and connection and um, like a powerhouse and courage and confidence and that energy vibe. So that's, that's all I want to say about that. I think that's appropriate. But um, So yes, they are transitioned, you guys. They are fully a spirit in the afterlife. All right, so we got another question here from Martha. Hi, Bridget. My question is, how, how was your transition, Colby, to the other side? And is he with his daughter, Gigi? Okay, we just we already answered that one. Thank you, Martha. Um, let's actually ask about the transition part, because I did see the helicopter piece, and I know that there was it was a crash, right? And I guess, is there anything that you want to share with us about that? about how your transition was. He's saying there was a lot of smoke or there was, you couldn't see. You could not see, there was a lot of smoke you couldn't see, like foggy smoke. And it literally looks like smoke, like fire. And you couldn't see, you just couldn't see. And so the visibility was the issue. And visibility, and then there's a mechanical something. There's something mechanical as well. Like, I don't know if they could, they weren't able to course correct. Um, 
because he says visibility, lots of smoke. And then he says, um, there is a mechanical piece of this. Mechanical failure, mechanical issue. There is a mechanical piece to that as well. I just need to say that. Um, he's like, nobody's to blame. He says, it's no blame. There's no blame. There's no blame. He says, you know, when tragic things happen, it's easy to try to comfort yourself by finding a reason for it, you know, a, a cause, some, something to blame or somebody to blame. And this just, this just wasn't that. It wasn't that. And um, there's time that's wasted on that. I understand that there's a need to know and there's a concern and question. I, I know that's natural, but uh, it's, it's uh, redirected grief, he says, when there's, you know, you can get stuck in that place, you know. He says, I, there's no blame. He has no blame. There's no blame. There's no fault. There's none of that for him from his perspective, okay? And remember, his daughter died with him. So as a parent, he might have some opinions about that, okay? But again, he also doesn't blame other people if grieving families are angry or they're suing or they're pursuing, pers you know, pushing an investigation or something like that. He doesn't, he doesn't blame anybody who w were to want some answers about that. He doesn't blame anybody for that necessarily, but that's their own process. He's like, that's their own process. That's their own, pro that's their own process. He doesn't want to judge people in their grief is what he's saying, basically. Okay, so thank you for that, Martha. Don asks, what did you learn, Kobe, from this life? Will you reincarnate? If so, when, why, why then and there or where? Thank you. <laughs> what, when, who, how, why, where? <laughs> All right, Don. All right, so what did you learn from this life? Now that's a little creepy. You guys might not be able to hear this. But there's a helicopter passing over my house right now. Can you hear it? That's a little creepy even for Bridget. Wow. Wow, okay. Unusual for that to happen. That does not happen very often. It would happen maybe when the farmers are spraying their fields and things. And this is April. That's kind of interesting. Okay, let's shake that off. So what did you learn from your life, Colby? And will you reincarnate? He says, I haven't made that decision. I haven't made that, I haven't made that decision, or a decision about that. <laughs> what I learned from my life, a lot. I said a lot, a lot. I'd like to think I learned from everything. I'd like to think I learned from all the experiences that I've had, but mostly I've learned from other people, you know, mentors, people that you can look up to, to give you guidance. It almost feels like there's like a religious figure. There's like either a pastor or some guy that was really connected to God that he looked up to, kind of like a father figure. Um, there's a lot of respect there with that particular person. Who's Wilt? Will... Chamberlain, Chamberlain, who's Wilt Chamberlain? I don't know who that is. You guys will have to fill that in. And then um, Wilt or Will, I can't tell what he's saying. But then he's saying, he's showing me some guy that's kind of like religious, uh, not religious. Um, he might not be affiliated with a particular religion, but God-like, very connected to God, very prayer-based, very faith-based. Um, I also see a tie or connection to Georgia. Um, He's showing me people that were influential to him, I think, or, or role models. He said, that's how you learn from life, is you have role models, people that give you a second chance, people that believe in you when you can't believe in yourself. When you're going down a wrong path, they try to correct you. And if you're not listening, they try again. They keep trying to reach you, even if you're not, um, if you're too thick-headed to listen, you know? They don't, they don't abandon you. They try to help. He says, they try to help. And when you're young and you get fame and there's fame, he said, there's a lot, it's easy to make mistakes. It's real easy to make mistakes and to take, to take that uh, fame for granted. It, and, and honest, he says, honest, it doesn't feel like it's going to last that long. It feels like, you know, something's going to happen, you know, whether it be an injury or um, some kind of circumstance is going to come, come along, a setup is going to come along where you won't be able to, um, 
live your dream anymore. Like it doesn't seem, you want to make the most of it while you can. And if you're real young when that happens, it, um, I'm not trying to make excuses. I don't want to make excuses for bad behavior, poor choices, and, but it's tough, you know, it can be real tough. And I think it's real important to be a role model for youth, to be somebody that you, and you act and everybody's a role model. Everybody, I want to be real clear on that, real clear on that. Everybody's a role model. You can change your communities. You can change things by being who, being yourself, by being you. You can't be blaming your failures or your successes on anybody else. You got to own that. You got to own the good and the bad. You got to own that. And you got to constantly be dedicated to work. You got to be motivated to working on yourself, to finding whatever it is that you, you feel that, um, purpose in. You got to find that purpose in that work. And you got to make something of yourself. That's on you. It doesn't matter where you came from, who your mom or your daddy, are, who your mom or dad is. What matters is who you is. It's kind of how I want to say it. Because he's like, it matters who you is. You know, it's like it matters who you is. It doesn't matter what your, your, your history is. It matters what your present is to make your future. Like you make your future. It's like, it doesn't matter what your history is. It matters what your future is. What does your future hold? That's on you. That's on you. That is on you. But when, when you're young, you don't always realize that. So I'm telling you now, you got to realize that. You got to take responsibility. You got to make something of yourself. And that's on you. That's on you. And he says, fame can corrupt you. It can. It's wonderful and it's evil all in the same. I uh, feel blessed to have the opportunities that I had and the chances that I had. And uh, there's a lot to be said about forgiveness and moving on and uh, fresh look, new opportunities. And I think everyone, I don't think everyone gets those kinds of chances or I don't think everyone gets the same opportunities. And that's unfortunate, but that's life. So you gotta make your own, you gotta make your own luck. Kobe, I didn't realize you were so like motivating, Mr. Motivational. Like role model-like, like I literally feel like you're like a role model, you know, for younger people, for kids, um, a bit. I'm not sure, I'm conflicted about that a little bit, because kind of, part of me is going, what? You shouldn't be a role model. And then the other part of me is like feeling this energy of, uh, yeah, absolutely you should be. You should be doing the best you can to be a representative for others so that they can see what's possible, you know? So I kind of feel both you guys are kind of a little bit of a conflict with that. I'm not sure what that's about. You guys can write it below if you choose to do that. All right, so will you reincarnate? You said you weren't sure about that. You haven't decided that. Uh, Wendy asks, did you know that it was time? Did you know before you got in plane um, or on the helicopter? I thought, I think it's a helicopter. It looks like a helicopter to me. Did someone tamper with it? No, none of that's, I've heard this by other psychics. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not, really inter I'm not really interested in speculating or being compared to other psychic readings or psychic channelers. That's not what Above Life Channel is about. But Wendy, I will respond and, and ask him the question of, did you know that it was your time? That's a good question. That is a good part of a question for you. Kobe, did you know that it was time? Did you have a sense that it was time? He said, nah, 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 nah. Um, my life was full. My life was good. And I'm not angry about it. I'm not mad. I'm not angry about it. But no, nah, no, nah, not in the way you think. No, nah, not, not in the way you're asking. Asking it. Thank you. All right. What do you want humanity, humanity to learn from the journey that we have from your, wait, let's see, let me ask this. This is from somebody called Warm Fuzzy <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, okay. Um, what does he most want humanity to learn from his journey here? So what do you most want others to learn from your life? It's like, they can't be learning from my life. They need to be learning from their own lives. <laughs> He's like, learn from yourself. Learn from your own mistakes. It's like, learn from your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. That's what he says. There's got to be a reason for making them. Learn from your mistakes, he says. Great. All right, Tammy says, I want to ask, what do you do on the other side? What are you doing on the other side, Kobe? Are you playing ball? Nah, it's not like that. He said, it's not like that. Mostly interviews, he says. 
mostly interviews. <laughs> Funny, okay, great. Um, let's do one more question. Let's see. This is from Diane. Let's see. My question would be to him, is he still around his family now in spirit? Okay, so we did talk about that. Does he do things to let them know that he is there? I sure hope this question makes sense. Yes, it does, Diane, it does. All right, so do you do things to give your family the sense that you're there? He said, yeah. He says, yeah, mostly in the bedroom. Something about the pillow or the sheets or a curtain, like a window by the bed. Pillow, sheets, curtain by the bed, window by the bed is what he's saying. So yeah, mostly in the bedroom. <laughs> he says, mostly in the bedroom. He's talking about a daughter and then he says something about Grace or Gracie. I think it's a girl. It's tricky though, you guys, because Gracie is actually in the name of an angel, a little angel that I work with when I'm dealing with children on the other side. So... It might very well be that the reason why I see Grace or Gracie is because when you're asking about this question, if the spirit is around the family and if the family knows what do they do um, in particular, it might be that Gigi is coming through and saying, I do stuff. I do some things around the bedtime and things for my siblings. That might be what it is. That's an interpretation that I'm making, them, not something specifically that they are saying to me. All right, Colby, so you do do something and it is around the bedroom and it looks like the pillow, the edge of the sheets pillow, and then like a window with the curtains, something about that. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. And she can smell me sometimes, he says, she can smell me. Either that or she's smelling his shirts or sweaters or something, his wife, it looks like, is smelling him. She can smell me something about his scent, so. All right, let's see if there's anything else real quick. A lot of similar questions, you guys. I'm not going to ask. Some of these I won't ask. I'm not going to be disrespectful during a channeling session. Yeah, some of these questions are, are repeats, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask additional ones. Kobe, is there anything that you can provide to us as far as inspiration or insight into these times that we're living in now? Very strange times. Um, I'm recording this, as I mentioned, you guys, at the end of April 2020. And so here where I live, we're still at the stay home orders um, from a health crisis that has been occurring the last few months here in the United States and around the world. And so, um, Kobe, my question um, in California, that definitely is the case right now. Is there anything that you can give us as far as insight about this particular time for humanity? Ah, oh, that's a big question. He says, ah, oh, that's a big question. He says, a lot will be written about this. He's like, that's for sure. Like, no doubt, a lot will be written about this. A lot will be written. So what do you mean by that? Like history. You're making history. He says, I hope that you will see or foresee that your your personal legacy or your page in history is really up to you it's a it's it's up to you as an individual the kind of impact that you're going to make in your family in your career in your community and it's not just it's not about being famous that's not what the you don't need the limelight in order to to make a contribution you've got to do the best you can i think the times that you're in now are definitely trying and challenging Certainly, certainly challenging. I don't know if you could keep me indoors. What do you think about the um, NBA playing like without, there's talk of playing games without, I don't know if they're actually doing this, but there was talk of playing games without audiences and things. Does that impact at all? He says, oh, there's a rush. There's a certain level of rush with the crowds, but no, it's the game. It's about the game. When you love the game, you're there, you're working, it's your job and you get to do what you love. So you don't, you know, it's, it's sad for the fans, he says. It's sad for the fans not being able to be part of that, you know. And, and that'll change, you know, in the future it'll change. And, and you can watch, you know, ball on television and things like that. So you, you're finding that you have more ways to connect with, with each other and with the things that you love than you did before. So, so maybe it'll be that you're not so limited now. You don't feel so limited in things because you've been forced to seek out other ways, you know, to... Uh, 
to get your fix on uh, sports and things like that, whatever that is for you, you know, it could be different things for you, but you've uh, had this time for you has, has created some some new ways of uh, thinking about things and, and maybe even problem solving, you know, that will lay the groundwork for some of that um, op options in the future. It's like success in the future is what he's kind of showing. So um, it's not all hope is lost or woe is me. It's, it's definitely um, a point where you can grow or you can shrink. He says, you're gonna to rise to meet the occasion or you're gonna shrink and stand behind somebody else. It's, you know, that's, that's your choice. He says, that's your choice. There's no, not, not one of those is right or wrong. It's just, it's an individual or a personal choice. So. All right, you guys, thank you viewers at Above Life Channel for your questions for Kobe Bryant in the afterlife. Thanks, Kobe, it was great to meet you. It was a pleasure, he said, a pleasure. All right. So I hope that this particular afterlife video has inspired your spirit, filled you up with some hope because remember, this is your life after all. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to Above Life channel if you do enjoy channeling videos and you wanna make sure you get them every Monday. Make sure you click subscribe. Thanks so much for being here.